Great, great. Hello, everyone, and many thanks for taking the time today to join the session. Uh, my name is Victor Heerdambari, and I've been working at AMBA and BJ here in London now for more than four years in various roles, but my current role has been focused on the development of the Business Graduates Association. Everything from the establishment of membership to accreditation services to the actual outreach to schools across the world, which has allowed me to travel to the many corners of the planet and visit your wonderful campuses and colleagues. So let's start today with a question. Suppose you wanted to be able to run a marathon in six months time. What do you do? Well, despite all the ludicrous solutions out there that guarantee instant and easy results, the truth of the matter is that you cannot accomplish your goals without working hard and being consistent. Nothing in life comes easy and by itself and taking shortcuts won't get you there. So let's return to our metaphor, uh, metaphor right now. You know you want to be fit for a marathon, so you visit a gym or a fitness center because you realize that you want to have to work hard and achieve your goals. Now, there are a few ways this can be done. A common approach is to go to a fitness instructor and a gym who will give you a set of instructions to follow. In most cases, this will be a prescriptive approach. Uh, the fitness instructor will give you a standard plan to get, get you where you want, a standard plan that's been used for many previous clients. Now we know that while a standard plan may work for some, it may not work so well for others. Due to genetic differences, diets, and previous, previous conditioning, a cookie cutter approach tends not to have the same effect on everyone. And to be completely honest, in some cases, it may have undesirable effects and get you injured. So not too optimal now, is it? But what if there was another approach? Suppose instead the instructor at the fitness center sat down with you and discussed your goals and what you wanted to achieve. You get paired with an instructor who has run a marathon before and they design a plan for you that's optimized in terms of diet, in terms of training regime, and after taking several samples. This tailored approach is bound to yield optimal results, isn't it? Well, the point of the metaphor is to see the person wanting to run a marathon as a business school. The gym with all the training equipment alongside the fitness instructor is the accreditation agency. So regardless of which gym you go to, you will have to work hard util utilizing the equipment to improve. However, as stated previously, there are different gyms and instructors. Some will give you a prescriptive approach and others will tailor that approach to your goals. It sh should come as no surprise then that the latter is BGA. So now that the metaphor has been given, I can divulge a little bit of background as to why BJ exists and our reasoning behind it. You see, we have been in the industry of accrediting business schools for a long time now, since the 1980s, in fact, focusing our efforts on accrediting the MBA program through AMBA. So we know the positive feedback that accreditation agencies receive, and on the flip side, the negative feedback they receive, being too prescriptive, we have been told, has put many institutions in a stranglehold, depriving them of innovation and experimentation. If a dean doesn't follow the criteria set before the accreditation agency, they risk losing their, their certificate, their job, and, well, probably the reputation of the entire business school. So they play it safe. But now tell me something here. How can a business school teach entrepreneurial thinking when itself cannot act this way? It's like being taught by a man who doesn't know how to fish, uh, how to fish. This is just not optimal. That is why with the foundation of BGA, it was decided that rather than being pre prescriptive and narrow, it would instill, allow, instead allow for business schools to establish a mission and strategic objectives that were particular to them without compromising the business school's freedom to innovate and then measuring the success of meeting those objectives. Thus, BGA's accreditation process is an impact-based accreditation that accredits the whole business school. But you know, there were more reasons for the establishment of BGA. Our CEO, Andrew Maine Wilson, uh, was the former chairman of the United Nations Prime, and most of you should be familiar with this organization. 
The issue, however, is that no matter how good Prime's intentions are in realizing the profile of sustainability in business schools around the world, its lack of funding and quality, uh, lack of no quality assurance means that much of its potential is left unrealized. So it was after his term as chairman when we discussed that we wanted to revive our old brand, the Business Graduates Association, which was actually our name in 1967, and weave it within the principles of responsible management and sustainability. At the end of the day, we have one planet and one ecosystem. All business, business leaders must understand this and strive to find commercial solutions that are sustainable for the planet in the long run. It is why, aside from just offering an accreditation process that embeds the principles of responsible management and sustainability, BJ spends a considerable amount of time on research and promotion of these topics through its Business Impact magazine and events. If you haven't already, I'd urge you to visit our website and simply click Insight and then Business Impact to read our articles and research. So let's take a deep dive into the cornerstone of BJ's accreditation process, namely impact. Though the BJ accreditation process does make use of general criteria based on uh, be best industry practice, uh, these are not only the only determining factors for schools to achieve a successful accreditation outcome. A fundamental part to achieving BJ accreditation is demonstrating measurable impact, positive impact on stakeholders. So let's create a little scenario here. Let's assume that you have established a business school called the Executive Academy. The Executive Academy is everything but a normal business school. It doesn't offer many degree programs. Actually, in fact, it actually specializes more in stackable certificates, such as digital marketing, corporate finance, and managerial accounting. It hires both professionals as well as academics to deliver its courses. And it's continuously offering new courses with new content for lifelong learners. learners. Its objective, to become a leading school in the area of stackable certificates and support the advancement of people's careers. Sounds pretty neat, right? Well, sadly, this school would be disqualified from most accreditations. It simply doesn't run like a normal business school. But what about its stakeholders? What do they think? What if the academy could prove that its courses are making a tremendous impact on its community and stakeholders? Sometimes it can be really difficult to prove and improve these things. But that is where BJ accreditation comes in. Because apart from just being an accreditation that audits the business school, BJ is also highly consultative with the aim to improve the various functions of the business school as well as its programs. BJ utilizes a system called the Continuous Impact Model or shortened SIM to help schools evaluate their impact on stakeholders, spanning across six dimensions. The SIM allows schools to focus their attention towards their strengths and further develop them. So let's go back to the Executive Academy for one moment. One of its strategic objectives is to be able to say with certainty that taking their managerial accounting diploma course will help young accountants advance their careers. So utilizing the SIM, we'd make use of the graduate achievement dimension. To create measurable impact metrics, we'd look at a framework kind of like this, with input, activity, output, outcome, and finally, impact. In this scenario, the metric we're looking at is career advancement for the accounting graduates. We'll measure this using three years worth of available data, and the input we can use in this instance is to understand uh, what might be having the most impact in terms of investing in good faculty and teachers on, for the course. So let's, for instance, look at this and say that we've increased our input for faculty budget. Well, what's the activity that we take with this available money? Well, we hire new faculty members and perhaps a few extra practitioners. What's the output of this? Well, we can organize more courses, uh, more one-to-ones with students, uh, perhaps even CCA lectures, which are shorter types of uh, lectures that you would have. And then finally, what's the outcome of this? Well, we see the program satisfaction going up quite clearly based on the more to one to ones, uh, smaller classrooms, and uh, perhaps more tailored courses. And then finally, the impact of this entire thing. And we can see that not only is there an outcome in terms of program satisfaction, but the actual impact you have on their careers, on your students' careers, is tremendous. A definite improvement for the Executive Academy. 
Now, this type of framework, though recommended, is not the only way to measure impact, but it is helpful. So due to the amount of work required to develop one metrics, uh, we usually only ask schools to prepare and develop about 10 metrics that can be directly linked to the school's key strategic objectives. The more thorough these are, the better chance the school will have in achieving accreditation. So now that we have established how the continuous impact model works, let me quickly provide an overview of the full accreditation process and the related stages. The accreditation process consists of three separate stages, namely the application stage, development stage, and finally, the assessment stage. So to begin the accreditation process, business schools must submit three documents, uh, namely an application form, which consists of a summary of the school's programs, objectives, structures, students, and faculty, Secondly, they must sign a cost schedule, agreeing the costs associated to the accreditation process. And then finally, a letter of intent signed by the Dean of the Business School. Once these materials have been reviewed and approved by BJ, the school moves on to the development stage, where the school is paired with a mentor from our network and begins work on creating their impact metrics using our continuous impact model, just like the example you saw before. And once these metrics are complete and the mentor approves the school's work, the metrics are sent for approval by BJ's accreditation board. The board may provide additional suggestions or give the school the go ahead to proceed towards the final stage, which is of course the assessment stage. In the assessment stage, uh, schools will need to draft two separate documents. The first is the self-assessment form, or SAF as we call it. And secondly is the self-audit report, or SAR. The SAF is a data-driven document where your school provides a thorough or thorough details and information on two sample programs that you submit. Usually this would consist of an undergraduate and a postgraduate program, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case uh, every time. If the programs are different enough, you may have a, a master's program or two master's programs that you submit uh, that focus on entirely different things. The SAR, on the other hand, is a narrative document. And think of this as your business school's ability to tell its story. How and why does it meet the five areas of BJA accreditation criteria? The SAR relies heavily on the data provided in the SAF and the SIM documents, neatly tying everything together into a nice little story about your business school. And so once these documents are completed, a peer review team will be organized by the business school, or for the business school, sorry. And AMBA and BJ works with more than 100 assessors around the world, giving schools the final say if they're happy with a organized peer review team. Typically, three assessors and members of the accreditation team at BJ will make a site visit. And the site visit basically consists of examining facilities, interviewing students and faculty, reviewing provided documents, and going over future plans for the school together with a senior leadership team. And very lately, we've been able to demonstrate this uh, in a virtual method as well. And what's great about the actual assessment visit is that schools receive verbal feedback on whether they are um, successful in attaining accreditation. So typically, schools can receive five or three year accreditation cycles. In cases where, um, in cases where they don't meet the criteria, they will be deferred and given a rescheduled visit. The two-day period is highly consultative, where the peer review team is actively engaged in providing schools with achievable future objectives and recommendations. So then you may ask, how long does the BJ accreditation process take? Well, we've designed the process to allow schools to go at their own pace, but a general estimate is roughly 18 months, though this may vary considerably from one institution to another. It can sometimes be perhaps a bit less. In other cases, it will be much longer. But I will say again, a general estimate is roughly 18 months. I should stress, however, that schools should not rush through the process. It's better to be fully prepared and fine-tuned for the internal processes so that the best possible outcome can be achieved. In terms of costs, we're incredibly proud at BJ that we, are, we can offer the accreditation at a relatively low cost compared to most accreditation agencies. It's no secret that accreditations can cost anywhere from 30 to 60 to above 1,000 pounds at least. Yikes. And that's not counting implementation costs. 
Well, with BJ, a full accreditation, not counting the cost of the assessment visit or their accommodation and travel expenses, comes to 15,000 pounds. Now, for joint accreditation, it's slightly lower. It's seven and a half thousand pounds for schools that want to do AMBA and BJ accreditation in one go. So, to gain more insight into BJ's accreditation process and even the AMBA and BJ joint accreditation, I've provided a link here where you can go directly to our website and you can download our accreditation criteria, the guidance, and the actual continuous impact model directly. And then finally, I just want to say something quite important here. I'm usually asked many times what the benefits of undergoing accreditation is. Most often than not, schools want to see immediate results in recruitment numbers and the establishment of a strong brand. But how can I tell you, if this is the sole reason you're thinking of doing an accreditation, you're, it's probably not for you. Why? Well, let's go back to our original gym metaphor. Accreditation is a continuous improvement process. It allows one to find errors and fix them. And in the case of a business school, it is to improve the experience for their main stakeholders. Accreditation will yield positive results, no doubt, if you focus on the improvement parts, if you follow the recommendations, if you take the process in seriously enough. You can go to a marathon race and see all the people finish and feel like you're being left out, like you want to share in the glory of completing the race. But, you know, it's easy to forget that the previous, previous to that race, there were six months or more of hard training. And it's the training, it's the process that leads to the successful completion of the marathon. So the, at the end of the day, you should see the accreditation this, this way. Everything in life is about the process, not about the end result. Focus on the process, focus on improving, enjoy it, and you will surely see positive results as a side effect. So thank you very much, guys. Here are my contact details, and uh, you have my phone number available as well. So if you want to reach out to me directly, feel free to do so. Uh, any questions about accreditation and membership, join accreditation, or just running a marathon, just get in touch with me. I'll be very happy to uh, speak to you then. So thank you very much, and back over to Paul.